So first things first, we select the cube, we delete it, and now we need to create the class. So basically it's a cylinder, so we have two ways. We can draw a cylinder or we can draw a center circle. In my case, I will draw a center circle. So I just draw somewhere here. I tell 8.5 centimeters. So I just make a zoom in. So normally I think these are the standard measurements of a glass. I'm not expert, so you can do your own measurements. So now we need to offset the face to go up and we move it up around 10.5 centimeters. But the glasses normally are not completely straight. They tend to go a bit outside. I can use this white circle and then we can just rotate it around. You will see the degrees on this part of the screen. You will see the degrees. Let's draw, let's draw minus four so that you can really see the effect. And now what we need to do is we can start drawing the floor, the flower patterns. So how can we start? Okay. So we can here on, on the right side of the screen, you will see that there is this enable snapping. I don't want to snap it to the face at this moment. So I'm going to turn it off. So I'm only snapping to curves and edges. So I will come and select a control point curve. And from the middle, I will start drawing, let's say from here down, I will start drawing a little flower. I want to move it to the front so that I can see better. And now I can, let's say, mirror it. Great. So now we have two curves. I want to join them. We press J to join. There is one single curve. And now I'm going to duplicate this part with Shift D. I go up and then again Shift D. And in this case, I want to make it longer. So I just scale it with S, G to move. And this one, I will try to just try to make it a bit more separate to each other. Okay, something like this. It is not perfect, but it should work. You at home, you can do it much better, I'm sure. Okay, great. So now we have these leaves. So I want to draw some other patterns. So for example, I can duplicate Shift D, or Shift D, rotate it by pressing Control you can snap it every five degrees. So you just move it this, for example, here, somewhere in the middle, you can mirror it. You can grab these two, Shift D, duplicate them and move it up around the same to here. We grab one of these, duplicate it, we move it down, rotate 45 degrees. So we go down and we just try to snap it somewhere in between, not exactly like here. We just go a bit outside and see how it looks. For example, here, I want to have the same distance, but inverted. So the leaves will be upside down. Okay. How do we do this? We can mirror it, but if we mirror it on the Y axis, you see that it's only snapping to the center. So if we want to have our own guide, we can press, for example, F for freestyle. You will see here on the right side. So if we press F, we can create our own guide. So we, I won't, I'm going to click on this point. So I press and I can move just left or right. And then we have our pattern. So you see, it's starting to look good. So now I just grab these ones, duplicate them and move it up. Okay, great. So there we have our pattern of the glass. I think it's okay. You can, you can draw your own style. You can experiment. This is, this is only the matter of experimenting, drawing, practicing, and this is what makes you great in whatever you do. I think it's great. I think we can continue now to make an, a radial array. Okay. So how do we do this? We select all the curves and this one too. And we can just come down here to radial array like this. So in this point, you see that it's going to cause a trouble because the lips are actually 
touching each other. If I'm going to project them to the object, it's going to create some artifacts that I'm, I don't, I'm not so happy. So we need to reduce the number to a point when they are, where they are not touching. Seven, they are touching. Okay, so six is the minimum. So we have this, we accept it with right click. And now we can just press Shift I to imprint curve. Or if you go, you press F to select all the tools of plasticity and then you press imprint. So in this case is Shift I and then you click. So what is going on here? You probably think it is a mistake. It only works on some parts. For example, here it works perfect. But what about here? What it's making plasticity is just projecting it from one side. So in this case, it's projecting from the front. So you see that this distortion is caused by the impression. But we don't want this. We, we want that the normals dictate the way of projection. So you see here on the left that there is the method, vector or normal. Vector is by planes and normal, when you click on it, you see that now it fixes. Because what it's telling is that the normal of this side is projecting to this, the normal from here, the normal from here, and so on. So now it's much better. And you see, it is quite good. So I think that is what we look for. We accept on it. And these curves, we can hide. So we can press Ctrl G to group them. We name these curves and we hide them. So these ones are still missing. So we click Add Current Selection to Group. So now what we look for is that these patterns are going a bit inside with a curve. We cannot achieve this as far as I know, by offsetting the faces or extruding it. If you do it like this, it's not exactly how I want to do it or how it should be. So what we need to do is we can graph the front face because I want to do it once and then radial array at the end. Okay, so we graph these faces. I'm going to shift X to delete it. So now you see it's not it's not a solid, now it's a, it's a sheet. So with the holes now, we just create one line that is going to come from the middle to the other middle. And then we can accept it. So you see that now we have a straight line. What we need to do is we need to grab a line that is a bit curved and goes inside the glass. So for this, I'm going to shift S to subdivide it. Once subdivided, you can see that if I grab the vertex from the middle and I press G to move, I can have this kind of arch. So this is what we look for, but we need it in the other direction. So we just move it inside and this is just by by um, by eye. I just say what kind of curvature I want. So in this case, I leave it like this. Okay. So what I need to do now is I want to have a loft from this edge to this other edge and tell plasticity that I want this line as a guide to patch it. We can change the colors of the lines. For example, you can press M and to see it better, we can grab a red one. So now you see it much better. So how can I create the line from this? I can select this edge, press Shift there. Now I have a line you see here. I can just drag and drop the material. So now it's red. And we can also do the same, shift them and drag and drop the material. So, so now we have both curves. What I need to do is select this red one and this other red curve and press patch. But it's not going to work because now it doesn't let us grab the edge that we are want wanting to use as a guide. In this case, we cannot use patch. In this case, we can use loft. So we press L to loft it and shift click on this guide we have. So now you see that we have a much smoother, much perfect shape. And this face, we just need to select both and join them. So now it's a single piece. And these curves, we can group them. 
we can call it red curves and we don't need them. So basically this is what we need to do for all these objects. So we just proceed, shift A to the middle, to the middle, subdivide it, shift S, grab this one and go inside. You can also grab the previous line we have and just duplicate it and move it here. But it's good sometimes to continue practicing. So we grab this, shift them, shift them, loft and guide. Select this object and this object and join them. We do the same here, shift A, middle to middle. Then we grab this, shift D, shift D. This we forgot to subdivide it, so we just grab the subdivide and grab this vertex, something like this, loft, guide. Okay, so you see that now you can grab all these. So now you see my glass is looking quite good. So now let's continue. We craft this face, this face, and so on. This maybe we can leave, because maybe we can just mirror it, as I said. Okay, so we delete these ones. And now we can make a line from middle to middle. Subdivide it. Ah, or I have a better idea. So. You have this line, you press first all these lines here, that they are in the middle. And we subdivide it. Okay, so if I'm correct, then we just grab all these vertex at the same time. And press G and move them inside. So everything should have the same curvature. Correct. And we just re repeat this part. We select all one side, Shift D, and select this side, and press Shift D. Okay. So from here to here, loft, guide. From here to here, loft and guide. The same here. Select both loft, Shift, click. And from here to here, loft and kite. Okay, now we select all these faces and join them. In this case, it's not joining, so we just select each one. J, 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 and this one with this one, J. And this is missing, J. Okay, so now we have this. We can select these lines and hide it. Now that we have one side of the glass, we can just create one line from here to here. Press C to cut. We can delete this area. So we can just mirror it. Press Q. I want to boolean it and press Q again to join them. I want to union. So now we have this part. So now the point is that I want to radial array it six times. So how do we do this? I can create a line from the top, maybe from here to here, let's see if it works. And I'm going to radial array this line from the center. We need to count six pieces. So in this case, I just see that this line is cutting and this line is cutting here. Okay, we accept. So we grab this line and this line, press C to cut, cut this object. We delete everything else we don't need. So we keep only this piece. We select it, press radial array from set and we just set six. So now we have it correct, accept. We join all the solids, Q and Q. Once everything is blue, accept. So you see now we have our glass so far. So now the easy part. So I think we can just select this face, 
press O because I want to offset. So you see that I just move it around and make some sort of uh, thickness, for example, there. What I can do now is extrude it, go down. Now you see that it's cutting, but I want also the decrease here, so I can just make, um, uh, for example, four. No, because we at the beginning we made four, so I want to have four again in the inside. Remember, I press E to extrude or E to extrude. Right click to accept. So now we have this part of the glass. So we press two because I want to, to make a chamfer from here. You can make a round chamfer, accept. And we grab this one. You can make something like this. And we can also go and chamfer this. Something like this. So now we are almost finished. There is also one thing we can do if we go to the front view. Now, you can say that these edges are extremely hard. This from here to here is so hard that maybe it would be better if we make it smooth. So how can we make this? If we go and press the two, we can select these edges and we can make a fillet. So we can grow it. Now it needs to think. In this case, it's not working. When it doesn't work, you can try one side only. Now it's working, but I think this is a hard fillet. So we need to go to the positive one. So you see in this case, it's making this soft transition. You will see, I will do one side, for example, something like this. So you see that the glass looks much better if we would have this sort of softer chamfer. So that's what we need to do. So what I need is select this side and then we can just make a positive fillet. But I want to have the same distance. So without doing anything, I just click here and then it will take as, as long as it is a round fillet it would take the same one, the same radius, and we can just right click on it. So we saw that this part of here needs to be rounded. So we will continue to run all this. So you see, make a positive one, click here, done. We go, positive, same click. And this we will do with all these. Remember, if both are not possible at the same time, just try it from one side and then just do it on the others. So we finished this part. So now compare the difference between this and this. So you clearly see that it's much better when it's softer or this gradient. So for example, if we just make another kind of material or render, you see it's much better. It is quite better to look at it like this instead of just making it hard. So as we saw before, we need to cut this part and just radial array it. So we, we know that this line and this line are the ones who cut. So I'm just going to go to the top view, press C to cut. I'm going to grab this, this, and this, delete. Just radial array it here, radial array, click on this and we have six. Everything looks good. Q and Q, join them. Uh -huh. It joins them. And now we finally finish our class. And now it's time to take it to Blender. And in Blender, we can make the, the textures, the materials. And in the end, we can make the final render. Okay, now we're in Blender. 
the first thing to do, we need to press N to take the tabs to the right side and we look for the tab plasticity. This you get once you install the plasticity add-on and it's quite easy to use. You just make connect, live link and refresh. So now you see that here it started to appear in subfolders or in these collections, our object. Now it is too small, that's why we don't see it. But if we delete the cube, you will see that now here we have our glass. Okay, first things first, what do we need to do here? We have the object, so we need to make the render and the materials. So we come to the side view and we just create, for example, we can make a new point. Now this point, we need to convert it in 3D, otherwise it's just only making us move in one single plane. When we convert it to 3D, now we can start to extrude it. So we come here and we just make something like this. And we extrude it again up with E and come here. So now we have our little shape. Now this shape is a bit too small, so I'm going to move it G and X, something like this. And this one is also a bit too low, so I'm going to move it G set. And maybe this one a bit to the front, so G X. Okay. This we need to make a fillet, so we go right click, fill it, for example, like this. And now we have our line. Now this line we needed to convert to object, convert to mesh. Now we can do tap to edit mode, select everything, and we can just extrude it to the side. So extrude it in the Y. We have our little soft box or something like this. Right click shade smooth, G and Y. So, perfect. Now we can have some environment to start making our lights. Shift A and we can make a new light area. We move it around here, rotate. The size, I can also make it smaller, something like this. Now let's see how it looks. We go and instead of making EV, we make it in cycles. So cycles, GPU, and we can start to see the results. So I have our little glass. In this case, I think it's okay. -ish. So I'm going to start making the material. I go to this material tab, I make new, and let's name it glass. Now, you know that the glass needs to have almost all the transmission and we have some sort of a frosted glass. In this case, we need to reduce the roughness. So it is a much clearer glass, something like this, I would say. And already right now it looks pretty decent. I think it looks okay. Let's make it a bit, just a bit above that it's just slightly floating on the on the floor, this gives a bit stronger shadows in this area. Maybe the light, it could be that the light is a bit strong. So we can select the light and reduce the power. And now in this case, it's a thousand watts. So what happens if I make it 500? It's even, or let's try five. Okay, five watts is okay, I think. It gives a much more contrast in the image. Now the material is a bit too perfect, so I would like to do something with the shading. So we create a bit of a bump. So we go to the normal and make bump. And here I would also like to make a um, noise, noise texture. I connect the fac to the height. So now you see something quite strange, but it is too strong. So what I need to do is Texture coordinate, texture coordinate. So this I connect, I want the object. So the object is going to give me this mapping. So in this case, I connect object to vector. 
Now you have something more interesting, but still horrible. Maybe the detail around nine. So you, you see it has this sort of deformation that is quite normal, but it is too strong. So let's reduce it. It needs to be quite, quite minimum. So you will see imperfection. Now this imperfection is what we look for if we want some sort of um, semi-realistic render. It could be that this detail maybe needs a bit low. Let's try to make it. For example, in this case, with a detail high, we can see some sort of realism in the glass. We can maybe make it a bit less. So it's just a matter of experimentation. In this case, you can take as much time as you need and maybe make a better material than me. We make a camera, so we take the camera and we just make, go to view, camera to viewport. And we just place the glass around how we want. Maybe I would like to also add another light, maybe one on the side and maybe one above. We can go to, for example, with this, we can convert to 3D viewport and click and find a render click on the camera and this we can maybe make it a bit like this and this we just start by duplicating this light shifting and move it somewhere somewhere like the same distance rotate it around so now you see that I have a much interesting reflections this is just an experimentation you can do also your light rig so this is the, the render we just made as you see there is a lot of noise it could be that the bump is too strong so this we need to reduce probably and also the roughness i think the roughness is a bit too strong so we come to the glass and you see here also it is a bit too strong this imperfection of the bump we reduce it by half for example 0.02 now it looks a bit better, so probably I'll leave it like this. And we said that the roughness was too strong. So we got here to the roughness and maybe make it 0 0.05. We can also try another kind of illumination. If I want to have it like, um, like this gradient floor of colors, of contrasting colors, for example, we can have this light and this 10 watts item. I'm not so sure if it's too strong still. So let's, for example, try five and here as well, five. Mm, it could be. So let's make some colors. In this case, I will take the bright light and make it maybe a bit uh, pinkish. Or let's try to make it bluish. And this light, we try to make it pinkish. Light, for example, we can take one of these duplicate it, rotate it, and position it as how we want. Something important, I, s I realized that our camera has a focal length of 50 millimeters. I normally don't like, like to leave it like this. I would prefer to leave it like in 100. Let's make another camera. So shift the camera and where is it? Okay. So we select camera one and let's Now let's try to make something more interesting. We can take the view. Okay, the camera, I just leave it like this for the moment. And let's tweak the lights because it's still not my favorite illumination. So power, we can maybe take 10. Maybe the floor, I don't know if, if it can be a bit less rough. The light, maybe so, and this light stronger.
Let's try to make the floor more metallic. So we have a, a smoother or shiny reflections on the floor. Now the light here is maybe too strong. And also the light in the back. Let's make a render. So this is just for, for showing you. This is a tutorial. Of course, you can have as much as perfection as you, as you wish or as you look for. You just need a bit of post-production if you want. In Photoshop, arrange a bit of the curves, a bit of here and there, some tweaks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want, you can follow me in my social networks. I am going to continue to upload some more tutorials in Plasticity using Blender. Normally the workflow will be like this. I do the work, the objects in Plasticity as much as I can. And then I migrate them to Blender. In Blender I make some basic illumination, basic materials. And then I will present the final product like this. If you like my work, please subscribe, like and share. This means a lot to me. It helps the channel grow and it motivates me to continue making these tutorials, sharing my knowledge as much as I can. And thank you and see you until next time. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to go deeper into the world of 3D modeling, I have another course where I explore more advanced plasticity tools. This course is focused on the basics of 3D modeling. We will start from scratch and step by step we will understand how to manipulate shapes and forms, how to solve problems along the way and discover the secrets of some plasticity powerful but hidden tools. And inside Blender I will show you how I made the shaders, lightning and the final image. By the end of this course, you will have a solid foundation in 3D modeling inside Plasticity. This will take your skills to the next level and open up a whole new world of possibilities for your 3D creations. I will leave the link in the description below. So check it out and let's get started.